Welcome to the 52nd lecture of surface engineering. In the previous lecture, we discussed application of electron beam primarily for welding purposes and we realized that electron beam offers one of the biggest uh, advantage possible by way of deep penetration welding, which is not possible with other kinds of uh, be it directed energy or conventional tools. Uh, but then EB is not necessarily only meant for welding. EB also has a large number of applications, uh, particularly a very specialized application for surface engineering and that is what we need to discuss now today. So, let us go straight away into the configuration. You have seen this view graph in the previous lecture. So, essentially we have these are the constructional features. We have an electron beam gun, we have a power supply which applies a very high negative uh, potential difference to give uh, kinetic energy to the electrons. We need a control system, we need a uh, sample manipulation stage and of course very high vacuum chamber. So this is the overall setup uh, and uh, this is the high voltage cable and uh, tungsten cathode which emits electrons, the bias cup which actually deflects and uh, makes the beam, the primary anode which has certain central hole, the electron beam, this is the electron beam and this is how we actually focus and uh, for focusing as I mentioned please recall that we need both electromagnetic lenses for focusing as well as deflex deflection or deflecting so that we actually are able to irradiate exactly the desired spot and not elsewhere. Maybe this is the desired spot but if we want to move from this spot to this then we need to move the stage along this direction or the other direction. So there, there could be a relative motion between the beam and the workpiece. And this is where we get the either call it a well piece or maybe the surface melted zone. So this is the overall setup. Uh, we must uh, quickly recall that we, rec we require very high vacuum and since there is no extraneous material present in, in, the, in the form of shielding gas or flux or anything. So it is a very clean process and uh, we need certain sa stage manipulation. Um, uh, if we want uh, welding of course uh, then we do not need a filler. But if we want surface modification, surface cladding or surface alloying and so on, then we actually can have a pre-deposited layer or um, uh, sort of a already an available coating and then we melt the coating along with part of the substrate and create an alloyed zone. But we can also feed in material inside the chamber. So we will come to that in a minute. So this is the overall setup. This again is repeated from the previous lecture just to uh, bring home the point that uh, the same configuration uh, and we require the similar um, mechanisms for uh, focusing for deflection. Also we need a weaving port and we need to maintain very high vacuum uh, before we start the electron flow and ev eventually when, once the irradiation occurs then this is how uh, the surface of the solid gets I mean undergoes melting process. But uh, this also is important to recall that uh, when the electron, when the incoming electron beam interacts with the solid, it actually creates a, a heat affected zone or hot zone below. Uh, and uh, in the process, uh, because of this high uh, uh, stream of particles carrying uh, charged particles carrying very high kinetic energy, when they are incident onto the surface and when they interact with the solid, they can emit secondary electrons. They can certainly create uh, heat radiation out of the surface. Uh, they can also create uh, not only secondary electrons but also backscattered electrons. Um, it then um, uh, it can also emit certain amount of x-rays because you are rapid, you are rapidly decelerating the incoming stream of electrons and that rapid deceleration can actually lead to emission of x-ray. So you need a good protection around. But the most important thing is in no time uh, the incident beam will interact with the solid matter, raise the electrons to higher energy state and allow the electrons to come back to the ground state and in the process it will allow the heat to be absorbed by the solid and this will uh, be converted into lattice heat. And then heat flows, heat flows vertically downwards and also laterally to some extent depending on the relative size of the or the diameter of the beam with respect to the substrate thickness. So, uh, so this is the processing zone, the so called processing room. You also need a compound desk on which the substrate which may be a small light one or maybe a very large thick one and you also need to be clamped well so that it does not 
deflect during the processing period. Then you need, uh, this, so this is your workpiece, uh, which is placed here. Uh, you need the electron gun here. So this is the electron gun, which actually emits electrons. You need a cathode. So this is the cathode through which the electrons are emitted, from which the electrons are emitted, and towards the anode. So from, from this side, you actually will have it, uh, um, uh, it, the emission will take place towards the cathodes or the electrons will flow towards the cathode. Then uh, through this opening, uh, central opening, the electrons will flow, but you also need uh, uh, some kind of a covering to um, cut out the stray radiations. Uh, and uh, then this, the, the configuration actually, uh, this entire, the, this is the electron gun part. So in the electron gun part, this uh, you have the filament, the cathode, the anode, and this whole thing together is called the Vanellt uh, electrode. Then you have the focusing lens here, you have the deflection lens here, and so you actually can, at the moment, let's say the point of contact is here, the irradiation is here, but you can also deflect to this point or this point. So this deflection or rastering is possible by manipulating through this uh, deflection coil or the reel. Then you need uh, to evacuate, maintain very high vacuum. So this is how you maintain very high vacuum. And uh, this is how the beam interacts and then converts uh, the kinetic energy of the electrons uh, into the lattice heat of the solid substrate. So we can have, we can for example build components like this vertically, we can build a component like this or we can irradiate only this part, only this part and not elsewhere. Similarly, we can uh, irradiate or heat up only this part or build a material at this sh uh, sharp part of the shear blade and not the rest of it. So uh, we can uh, create additional layer and for example, the way they have written one and two, likewise you can build certain structures. You can even irradiate only these portions, the conical portions, the sharp tip of the conical portions, leaving the base regions completely unaffected. So material wise, all kinds of steel, uh, maybe low carbon, plain carbon steel or medium or high alloy steels, uh, all these various series, then peritic matrix cast irons, various tool steels. Uh, work hardenable, oil hardenable or um, hot working tool steels and so on. So various types of ferrous materials are ideal to be treated. But you can also do for titanium alloys, uh, magnesium alloys or any other reactive material. Zirc alloy for example is a standard material for all nuclear uh, power reactors and uh, uh, electron beam facility is ideally suited for such highly reactive materials like zircaloid, um, which is zirconium containing uh, alloy. Similarly, uh, niobium alloys or which requires very high melting temperature or even dissimilar uh, cases when you would like to create a clad on zirco alloy with another composition. So electron beam would be ideal for that. So the, uh, the term hardening here does not necessarily mean only phase transition what we generally are used to of uh, um, austenite converted to martensite. This means also creation of hardened layer onto the surface, including by way of cladding. So uh, these are the processes. So obviously, if you want to harden the entire surface or with a, uh, create a coat, then you start with a certain uh, layer and then you go layer by layer and then make it uh, wider. And when you have done the whole surface, then you will definitely see certain level of overlap. So if this is a particular layer, the next layer will not begin exactly, exactly at this surface, uh, at this interface, will begin somewhat here. So one layer created like this, the next layer will actually start somewhat in between. So there will be a certain overlap here. And that is what you see, uh, but very nice geometric and precise uh, bead sizes. So typically across the bead, you will see that uh, the hardness wise actually, um, 
there could be um, variations and that is purely because of uh, uh, the treatment or the composition that you actually are treating. Um, the, the various geometries are possible. You actually can make stripes or make dots or circular dots or you can create oscillation of the beams and create uh, certain complicated shapes. So, the point is that on a flat surface for whatever reasons if you would like to treat these kind of uh, uh, stripes or create these kind of stripes and leave the portion in between unaffected or you create certain patterns like this which are maybe circular or some geometric shapes, but leave the rest of the surface unaffected or on the surface you actually would like to create such special shapes or contours that is also quite possible with electron beam. So, anything like irregular path or a circular path or certain area coverage and so on. So, all these are possible. So, essentially we have to ensure that if this is the substrate and this is the beam, then we need either of these two to move to create surface integration. So, if this is the surface we are talking about, so we need one beam to cover like that, another like that and likewise this is how we can cover the entire surface. And when we do that then as I already mentioned that there will be a certain overlap. So, the next beam will not start where we ended, but will actually start somewhat uh, uh, you know already covered area. So, that there is uniformity in the microstructure across. The one of the biggest application in terms of surface engineering using electron beam is uh, related to cladding. And uh, this means that for example, the worn uh, parts of a very expensive tool or um, shaping tools, maybe cutting tool or um, maybe a nozzle or a, maybe even a gear or something. If, if it does not make sense to throw away or replace with a new one because the component is a very expensive one, then one can actually try and clad the same alloy composition or a different alloy composition by using electron beam as a source of uh, heating and melting. So, either you have pre-placed powder which is which uh, with certain binder you actually can create. So, if this is a component surface on the cross section you can create a top layer and then use a, a electron beam to raster over the surface. So, that not only the top layer melts but the molten layer also dissolves a part of the underlying substrate. So, that you form a nice bond here and in the process you actually develop a much harder layer on top. It is not only about hardening the layer, it is about also restoration of the or um, uh, basically if, uh, if a particular um, component has developed some crack or some dent like this here, you actually can refurbish or reclaim this by way of putting uh, material here. And this precise filling up of the uh, crack or the gap is possible by way of either feeding through a filler wire or fill the gap with certain powder and then use electron beam to cover this area. And when it melts, if the composition is the same as the substrate, then this interface are practically in invisible. They actually integrate very well with the, with the component. So, cladding is a very important application. In fact, on uh, components which is for example, margin steel or high alloy tool steels or even uh, silk alloy or titanium alloys and so on. So, this kind of uh, possibility is uh, certainly very useful. So, we can feed by uh, uh, into the molten pool by way of powder. It can be instead of powder, it can be wi wire, it can be a tape, it can be um, other forms uh, in, in whichever way you actually can create. So, the molten layer will solidify and it in the create a good metallurgical bond and uh, this uh, is done in vacuum and uh, with very high precision. So, obviously, there is no in most of the cases there will be very little requirement of uh, subsequent processing or machining and so on. The, the liquid metal uh, pool which actually solidifies within this gap. Say for example, if this is was the gap and you have filled it up with 
the powder and then you are melting or you are feeding filler metal and uh, just allowing the liquid to flow in and cover. Uh, in such situations, uh, when the melt pool solidifies, you actually can't make out any difference after this and there is no need of any surface machining or any other post uh, requirement, post tre uh, treatment requirement. There is no further annealing or anything required because this volume is very small, is the same composition as here and there is very good wetting here inside the cavity. In the process you also see a lot of grain refinement and creation of certain residual stresses. Now this is something which one needs to be worried about because in any fusion process we all are aware that generally the residual stress is tensile in nature. So on the surface be it welding or surface engineering if you generate residual compressive stress then this is not so good news because if you form a cracks by some means there will be an easy chance of opening of the crack and failure and leading to failure. So one needs to find out as to how you can reduce the uh, relative degree of residual tensile stress on the surface or if possible bring in residual compressive stress on the surface by way of some special treatment. So the thickness that you require will depend upon of course the parameters, uh, the current and the uh, energy or the potential difference that you are also the relative position of the weld uh, of the electron beam focus, but also the feed rate or the speed at which you feed material in at the melt pool will determine what would be the relative thickness of the clad or the, or the uh, refurbished layer. I mean clad essentially would mean as if you are cladding the whole surface, then you call it cladding. But when you are repairing only a small part of a, let us say a, a, a particular shear blade, so you, so, so this is the shear blade uh, which actually got worn out. So you are cre treating only this part. So this is refurbishment, this is reclamation. Whereas if you want to put a hardened layer on throughout the surface, you call it a cladding process. So this is a typical <coughs> microstructure done on a tool steel. The temperature that the metal sees will decrease from the surface to the core and uh, yesterday we did discuss uh, about uh, um, the, the way the uh, iron beam interacts with metal and there if you recall while discussing iron beam we did say that the deposition profile is Gaussian and the peak is below the surface. The same deposition profile or the feature applies to electron beam as well. Though the penetration depth is, uh, I mean one can vary uh, or is controllable, but what is not controllable is that the peak temperature is not at the surface but below the surface. And hence because of this reason EV is more suited to um, deep penetration welding than um, shallow welding or for that matter surface engineering applications. But nevertheless, this peak is not too far below the surface. So if you are doing a cladding operation, then EV can be ideal. And it is also very ideal because if you are dealing with components which are very reactive, for example, titanium or magnesium, which easily would like to, would uh, always react with oxygen present and then create uh, oxidation. So what all we discussed in this uh, surfacing application of electron beam um, for reactive metals, for sophisticated or uh, expensive components, we can use EB also not for joining alone, but also for surface engineering and the biggest possible surfacing application could be uh, for example cladding or simply surface melting uh, under because melting and rapid solidification because of the rapid heat extraction um, during the uh, solidification process allows a very uh, small grain size or nucleation, high nucleation rate, low growth rate as a process in the process we actually end up getting very small tiny little crystallites throughout the surface and they do not grow much so we get large grain refinement effect. The process parameter is just like welding here also the beam current uh, applied voltage between the anode and cathode the uh, degree of vacuum, the uh, degree of overlap, the relative position of the focus with respect to the 
uh, substrate surface. All these are very standard process parameters. Um, since the whole process is done at very high vacuum, uh, it is quite possible that the, uh, the cooling rate that we effectively get in case of welding uh, or surface engineering using electron beam is not as high as one can get in for example, laser processing. So, that is a limitation, but it is also at the same time should be argued that laser or other many other processes actually are done in air or uh, so if you are dealing with zircaloy or zirconium or titanium which is very high magnesium very highly reactive ones then eb is better suited than other processes but eb is not an ideal tool necessarily not necessarily an ideal tool for surface engineering why this is still used for surface engineering because if you want to clad or harden or deposit or simply surface melt a very sophisticated and a very reactive metallic component, then uh, the high vacuum that you have in case of electron beam is very, very helpful. And of course, another very big advantage is that it probably can melt anything. It, if you apply good combination of time and power density, you actually can uh, melt almost all possible solids, unless they decompose even before melting like diamond. Um, you would rather use a uh, sophisticated, expensive, complex shape and uh, other major uh, specialized requirements by EB assisted welding or surface engineering uh, and not necessarily do things which are done routinely outside, can be done routinely outside using even just an arc torch or arc melting unit or uh, TIG or MIG unit and so on. Just because this unit itself has, carries a large capital cost. No, you have to have the whole chamber kept under very high vacuum. You also require um, the electron beam. You need a gun, and the gun should be able to provide you stable substrate, stable electron beam uh, to be to hit the substrate surface and melt or do other things. So, then you have to need a protectant chamber so that the uh, emitted electron secondary backscattered or x rays do not actually go and um, create uh, problems for the operator or uh, anybody outside the in, outside in the room, same room. Um, so, after this, we will move into the third uh, possible uh, direct energy beam called laser and you will realize that laser actually could be a much more versatile tool for surface engineering than electron beam. But we must realize that there are niche applications where you would rather use electron beam and not laser uh, depending on uh, the scopes of uh, oxidation or reaction with atmospheric air or uh, other gases present or maybe some other uh, specific reasons. But if you are dealing with components of sophisticated components which are expensive, the material is very expensive and at the same time very reactive and you are uh, willing to, you are not willing to take any chance, then of, of course, electron beam facility will be most handy either for welding or for surface engineering. So, thank you very much.